Okay, so you've read the question, let's just sort of go over it a little bit to make sure we understand it. This is basically a conservation of energy problem, but it is a little more advanced, so I'm going to assume you've learned a few things already. So basically the question is, we have an unstretched spring here, and when I place the one kilogram object on it, and I let it come to equilibrium, so when I drop it, it's going to go boom, and after a while, it's going to come to rest. And the equilibrium point is when the spring is compressed by two centimeters. Then, I'm going to take my hand and I'm physically going to lower the spring until it's compressed by five centimeters. And when I let it go, boo, it's going to shoot up. And the ball's not attached to the spring, so it's going to fly up. And the question finally is, says, I believe, A, how high above the unstretched spring does it end up? And part B is what's the maximum speed of the ball. So we'll get to that as well. So hopefully that makes some sense as you can see it. I like to do a nice big chart. And in each chart, I'm going to do the different types of energy. We've got the elastic energy, the kinetic energy, the potential energy, and the total energy. And of course, these are related by a really simple formula, right? E, E plus E, K plus E, G is equal to the total energy. And I'm going to bear that in mind anywhere along the question. These three have to add up to that one. So first things first, I've got the mass of the object, E, E is a half K X squared. E, K is a half M B squared. I'm just going to write the formulas here. E, G is M, G, H, N, E, T is just all three of those things added together. There's this K. What the heck is K? It wasn't given. But you were given enough information to figure it out. In fact, that's why we were given all this equilibrium information. So before we get into the energy, let's go back over here and draw a little free body diagram of the object at equilibrium. We have FG down and we have FE up. It's at rest, so acceleration is obviously zero. So I can see that FE minus FG must equal zero. So KX must equal mg. At the equilibrium point, the forces are balanced, of course. They're equal. So k must be equal to 1 times 9.8 divided by x, which is 0 0.02 meters, which equals 490 newtons per meter. So I've taken care of that, and now I've got k. I can go ahead with the rest of it. Um, there are some other variables here. Where am I going to define x? When is x zero? Remember, x is zero when the string is unstretched. What about h? Well, that's sort of up to you. I'm going to call h zero at the bottom. Where the string is, the spring is the most compressed, I'm going to call that a height of zero. So everything else will be relative to that. And it's important that I am clear about that and consistent. Otherwise, I don't stand much of a chance of getting the question right. Even though, especially part A, is quite easy. So, for part A, we're interested in the top. But we also need to know about the bottom. Because it's a conservation of energy problem. So, for part A, the max height We're going to look at our little equation here. What is the energy in the spring at the bottom? Well, it's a half kx. So if you do the math there with x being 5 centimeters, you'll see that's 0.6125. What's the kinetic energy when it's at the bottom? You're about to let go via 0, so the kinetic energy is 0. And what's the potential energy due to gravity at the bottom? Well, h is 0, so mgh is obviously 0. So the total energy is equal to 0 0.6125 joules. The reason we did this at the bottom was because it's the only place that we know everything. We have to find the total energy somewhere. We found it at the bottom. The reason we have to find the total energy somewhere is because of the law of conservation of energy it tells us that if we know the total energy at one place, it's going to be equal everywhere else. So I know that the total energy here is also 6125. And I know the energy here is 6.25. I don't even know where this is. I haven't labeled it. But I know it's going to stay the same. So at the maximum height, what happens? Well, at the maximum height, velocity is zero. Right? Ooh, it stops moving. At the maximum height, 
what is the stretch of the spring? The spring is now unstretched, it's off the string. So the spring has energy of zero. The height, the kinetic energy is zero. We know the total energy is that. So we know that MGH equals 0 0.6125. 0 so we know that MGH equals 0 0.6125. And when we do a little bit of math, we can see, I hope, that point 6125 divided by 9.8 is 0 0.0625, which is 6.25 centimeters. But that's not the answer to the question, because the question said, what was the height of the object over the unstretched spring? And we defined h to be from here. Right? The ball is going to fly up into the air, and it's going to land. It's going to get to some maximum height above the unstretched value, it's not going to be 6 above here, it's going to be 6 above here. So therefore the answer is that h max is in fact only 6 minus 5, only 1.25 centimeters. Okay, so that's part A, that's not too bad. A lot of students can get part A right just by saying a half kx squared equals mgh which is how some students learn the law of conservation of energy in grade 11. A half mv squared equals mgh. It's not true, of course, but in part a, half kx squared is equal to d total, and mgh equal to d total at a different time, so the math sort of works out. But for part b, that's totally going to mess you up. Okay? In part b, those students are going to say, oh, well, wouldn't it be great if we set all the other energies to zero and we found EK? What if EK was 0.6125? Well, then I could find a velocity. But that's total garbage. Why? Because if you think about it, there's no point in the question where both EK and EG, sorry, EG and EE are going to be zero. Right? If EE is zero, then the potential energy is not. So we have to try and think with our brains, where is this going to happen? The most common answer is to say when it leaves the spring, i.e. when x equals zero. Okay. That's the most common answer. As it leaves the spring, it's going to have the most speed. Once it leaves the spring, it's going to start slowing down due to gravity. So let's see what the kinetic energy is there. We know the total energy there. The potential energy, elastic energy, is zero. But mgh is not zero. The potential energy is mg times 0 0.05. mg.05. So when we do the math, we end up with a kinetic energy, which is equal to 0 0.1225. That's just the kinetic energy. That's 0.1625 minus this equals that. These two have to add up to 0.6. So, Students that are thinking at least better than the people who just set everything else to zero and assume that EK was 0.6 will at least get a much smaller answer because the maximum that kinetic energy can be at the when it leaves the spring is 0.1225. But that's hardly a proof. Is there another area? Well, we don't really know, but if we think about it really clearly, we can see that in fact there is another spot. There's another spot we're interested in, so why don't we just test it and then see what happens. What happens at the equilibrium? What about when x equals 0 0.02? What happens then? Then we have a half k 0 0.02 squared as the spring energy. We have EK, which is what we're trying to find, and we have MG times 0 0.03. The height is now 3 centimeters above 0. And of course, the total energy is still 0.6. So we can see that the kinetic energy is going to be equal to 0 0.6125 minus a half times 490 times 0 0.02 squared minus mg times 0 0.03. And when we work all that out, we end up with a bigger number, I believe, 0.22. This is all energy, so it's in joules. All the numbers in my chart are in joules here.
So I can see, in fact, that is greater than 0.1125. So this number is the number I'm going to use to find the Vmax. This is the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is a half mv squared. Hopefully you can do the math yourself, times 2 divided by 1 square root. Therefore, we should end up with a maximum speed of about 0.66 meters per second. So, one more time, let's think about why the maximum velocity is into equilibrium, not when it leaves the spring. When it's just about to leave the spring, gravity's pulling it down, and the spring is pushing it up. But it's not pushing it up nearly as hard as gravity. So the thing is still going up, but it's already slowing down. Does that make sense? Between 2 and 5, gravity is going to be smaller than the spring force, and that's why it accelerates up. Once it, heat, it hits equilibrium, these two forces are equal, now it's going to start slowing down. It's not going to slow down as quickly as it slows down after it's left the spring, but it's already slowing down. Hopefully that sort of makes sense to you. You can play around with a little bit of the math if you want, and if you really don't believe me, try finding what the kinetic energy is at one centimeter. Try finding it when x is one. Try finding it when x is three, and see if I'm telling the truth that this is the biggest that it gets.